For now, how you might consider a molecular dynamics simulation is as a closed box. If a particle hits the border, it will be re-put inside it from the same point, as a ball hitting a wall. And that's a way you can do it. But what can you do if you are interested in bulk interactions? As you know, bulk interactions are the ones that happen when you are have around a huge number of atoms and molecules around. So you have no border effects. No interfaces, nothing. Pure bulk. You could use a very, very big box. And no, it's not a solution because it would be computationally very, very, very expensive and you will still not have a bulk behavior. Or at least you might have it for two or three atoms in the middle, but you would have a huge amount of atoms that you don't need and are only there to create this very small bulk area. So what's the other solution you could have? The other solution is called Periodic Boundary Condition, PBC. And what are these periodic boundary conditions? Simply, you simply create a series of virtual images of the central box. And they are infinite. In this way, even though you actually created more of a periodic system, or actually, if you want to be more topological, if you have a 2D structure, it would be more like an empty donut. If you have a 3D structure, it would be something more complex. But if you, the box is big enough and a particle won't feel itself on the other side, it will be bulk-like. Yes, okay, you can have spurious behaviors. Uh, of course, this periodicity will somehow come and haunt you <laughs> if you go to if you want to do two fancy things. But in general, it's the best way you have to have bulk behavior in a system without needing to simulate a huge, incredibly big system. How does it work? Let's stay simple. If I have a particle that goes through the box this, this direction, it will simply come in in this one. Do you remember the old, old video game called Snake? Exactly like that. Where you go out, you go in the other side. If you go out up here, you go in, in here. Point. In this way, it's like if it was, if it had an infinite space to move. Of course, we must be sure that it, this atom or molecule won't feel itself, otherwise you will create a spurious effect in which it will run after itself the whole time, or you will still put some kind of periodicity. It's okay if you're doing a crystal, because it's periodic. In that case, you want to simulate an infinitely periodic system, but if you're doing a liquid or a gas, then you don't want any kind of periodic interaction. And even in a crystal, you're, you still don't want the same atom to feel itself, usually, because you still want to have it an infinite reticle, an infinite lattice. And in an infinite lattice, each atom doesn't feel each atom of the infinite ones, as it was in your body. I don't know if uh, I explained myself. So, you simply have this snake effect. Um, you usually don't keep trace of how many times a particle went through a box and so how many virtual boxes it went through in any direction. But there are some situations in which you might need it, and like when you have to calculate diffusion coefficients. In that cases you don't want to know the relative movement relative to the central box, that is actually the only box that really exists, but you want to know the absolute movement in all the in all the virtual boxes you have because it could have gone in each direction many, many, many times, and you want to know it. But except for that exceptional situations, you really don't care how many times it's passed. You simply want to have a pseudo-infinite system. Now, here I show a perfectly squared back box, but of course it doesn't have to be. You are free to use any form that is able to cover the whole space. So actually you can have any form that is allowed in a crystal. 
So you can have a square, you can have it um, with not uh, 90 degree angles, um, you can have hexagon, if you want to have something that is more similar to a, to a round thing, etc, etc, etc. Any form that can cover the whole space, you can do a box with it. But of course, the most easy thing is to do a rectangular one or a squared one, depending on your need. And of course, here I did it in two dimensions, but you will usually do it in three. Except if you want to create some kind of geometry in which you have only periodic boundary conditions in one direction, but you won't have it in another. Because if you want to have something between two layers, for example, then you don't want it to go through the layers, but you want it to go only one direction. But these are more particular situations. In the standard one, you will have your, for example, your protein here in the middle, some solvent, and this way you will have a bulk of proteins solvated in solvent. If you do the box big enough, the proteins will, won't feel each other, and even though they might rotate, they don't have to still feel each other. You must pay attention to do the box big enough. And at this point, you have something that is similar to a bulk. Of course, you cannot have any wave, any wave function, any planar wave, and also in the reciprocal lattice, no wave ve vector that has a wavelength bi bigger than L, the length of the side of the box. Because of course it doesn't make sense, it doesn't exist. So PBC can be a problem if you are interested in oscillations that have the wavelength in the order of the length of the box. So if you wanted to, if you're interested in oscillations of length 10 angstroms, you will need a bigger box. That's again a not too common situation, but you have to keep it in mind. You have created a periodic system, thus only certain waves will be able to exist, only certain behaviors will be able to exist, and you might have spurious behaviors. There is nothing you can do about it. But again, it's more or less the best we have. There are also other solutions, like putting the system on the surface of a sphere, but it's a bit less used and, yeah, of course, as each method, it has its pros and its cons. I hope you enjoyed the video. All the sources and the materials I used to do it are written in the description below. And here is some more content for you. But wait, don't click on it yet. First remember to leave a feedback in the comments section to let me know what you think about it. Like, subscribe, follow me on social media, links in the description. And if you would like to support the channel, consider to donate on Patreon. Again, link in the description below. See you next time. I'm Maurice Karnbrock for The Computational Chemist.